Good. So um, what is learning sciences? You've all heard of it, and most of you anyway have heard of it in one form or another. Uh, it's the interdisciplinary study of learning. It comes out of work that sort of moved away from educational psychology towards real world contexts of studying learning in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, we study learning as it occurs in real world contexts, including formal and informal uh, environment, schools, museums, community organizations, families, wherever learning happens. So it's learning construed broadly. Um, and including studying familiar learning environments like classrooms and school departments, um, and also innovative learning environments like what you get when you have big immersive spaces like that or creatures like this uh, roaming around. There tends to be a lot of work that is in the technological design area, but not all learning sciences is necessarily uh, in that techie world. And interdisciplinary is kind of the key, world, key word. Our program is called Learning in the Disciplines. Don is a chemistry professor, and I'm a curriculum studies professor, and Allison is a math professor, and we're all also learning sciences professors. So it brings in people from uh, many different disciplines. And questions about learning that we tend to study are how, how does learning happen? How do people learn construed broadly? Individuals, organizations, groups, cultures. Um, what learning is valued, and how does the valuation of learning happen? Um, very focused on not just studying learning, but improving learning, designing learning environments uh, where different kinds of learning can happen. And there's a strong assessment component of our program as well. So how do we know what has been learned? Um, Jim Pellegrino, a number of doc students here have been uh, assessment specialists as well. And what do we do? Um, research, uh, that, and the research tends to be interdisciplinary. We have collaborative partnerships on grants with people from all across the university and from different universities as well. Um, so the work here is not much one person in their office by themselves. It's mainly groups of people uh, working together. Very often, learning sciences research is design-based, means that you're building something, designing something, creating something, and then using that design as a way to study the learning that happens. Again, not all learning sciences research is design-based, but it's a strong streak, and it's what the, the field is known for. And grounded in practice, we, we uh, care about learning in the real world. Um, LSRI's mission, this is what it says on our mission statement, so I guess I need to show it to you, but it's just what I exactly just told you. So um, we are very much uh, involved in collaborative work that also provides service to the city of Chicago and the and surrounding area actively engaged in communities here in Chicago in many different ways. Um, we have strong collaborative relationships with Chicago Public Schools. A lot of us do professional development in CPS, do uh, collaborative research in classrooms, also other school districts. Um, happy to talk more about that for whoever's interested. Uh, we also work in college classrooms. A lot of us are doing studies in UIC classrooms, in sociology, in chemistry, in math, different departments. Um, and other higher ed institutions, strong interest in working more with community colleges as well. Um, a lot of work happening in museums uh, and other informal uh, learning environments. Um, and, uh, and then also working with community organizations, cultural organizations. So if you're interested in doing hands-on research on learning in context, there are a lot of different ways that that kind of work is happening here. Um, this is the money slide uh, that there's, uh, we've brought in $105 million in external funding in the last 17 years, I guess that is, which is a lot. There's just a lot of grant-funded research that happens through here. Um, uh, since we do fund graduate students in our, in our doctoral program, we need to have grant funding to hire people as research assistants, so that's sort of the way that things work around here. Opportunities to be involved in grant writing from the get-go for anyone who's interested in that. The, the grant money that we bring in, it funds research, it funds design projects, it funds a lot of professional development. You very often see the group of faculty or a group of teachers in this room right here doing a chemistry PD, um, and it funds outreach. Uh, currently, according to Jim and Susan, there's $18 million in projects being administered through OSRI right now. And so now I'm just going to give you guys an overview of the PhD program. Are there any questions about anything that I've said so far? No? Here we go. Stop me if there are. So here's the way our program is structured. Um, there are six core learning sciences courses that everybody takes, and we're designed around a cohort model. So we admit four, five, or six usually students every year. And that cohort of about five students goes through the core courses together. It's, a, it's an important part of how we've designed it. We don't currently have a 
part-time program here, and the courses happen generally during the day. Um, so uh, those core courses are sort of the cohort experience. One of the courses is called Journal Club. It's every Friday afternoon uh, uh, for, for an hour and a half, and that's our speaker series. We have uh, the great Megan Bang coming to give a talk tomorrow at 1 o'clock if you want to come back, if you're able to. 1 o'clock tomorrow, you can hear Megan's talk. Different people. Um, it's not absolutely every week that we have a speaker, but, but every other week. Um, the speaker series alternates between people who are national, international, doc students in our program, people from UIC, people from other organizations. Um, and then, so in addition to your learning sciences courses and the journal club, you take courses in a disciplinary specialization. So each of you would choose what's your disciplinary specialization, whether it's business, whether it's math, whatever it might be. Um, and, um, hey, Min Jun. Um, and, uh, and then the other coursework is electives. Uh, research methods courses, we just have introductory methods courses, so people tend to pick up methods courses in other departments. Your disciplinary specialization courses, um, if you don't come in with a master's already, then you might be taking the equivalent of master's courses in that discipline, um, or getting whatever disciplinary courses you need to develop your dissertation plans. Um, uh, and, and then other electives, and then thesis research, which is once you're done with your coursework, you register for, the, for research hours and work on your research project. Um, and a key to this program is that it's an apprenticeship program. The idea is that people come in here and are involved in research as early as possible, starting year one. Uh, most people have either a research assistantship or a teaching assistantship. A lot of the people who do TAs are doing their research in the teaching assistantship, so studying those classrooms. Um, but the idea is that you'll have a chance to work with multiple faculty and be actively engaged in research, learning hands-on, uh, basically from the beginning. Whether that means making the robot work, or being in a classroom with a camera, or working with a group of teachers, or whatever that work might look like in your case. Um, these are the core courses. Uh, first year you take five, or first semester you take 500 and 501 intro to learning sciences, and then an intro to research methods, which is basically sort of um, a series each week, look at a different methodology, have a speaker come in who uses that method, and explore it a little bit. It's sort of like developing your shopping menu for your methods courses later on. Um, uh, 503 is going to be offered next semester. I believe it will be taught, as it often is, by Don Wink. Foundations of Scientific Inquiry, studying different ways to think about inquiry, what inquiry looks like in different disciplines. Um, second year, uh, students take analysis of teaching and learning interactions, which our class just ended a little over an hour ago in this room, where students come in second year with a set of data that they want to study, and it's a workshop class. Everyone is sharing their ongoing data analysis and, um, and sort of supporting each other as we read and, and develop uh, our understanding of how to analyze learning. Um, 512, design of learning environments, final project for that class is you design a learning environment to, and implement it to whatever extent you can. And we explore how we support learning through design and also how we study learning through design in 512. 513 will be offering next semester change in individuals and organizations. That looks at learning uh, at different levels of analysis. How do we think about learning above the individual level, studying groups of people, studying organizational change, studying change over longer periods of time. Um, and then Journal Club, any questions about the coursework? How many are per semester of um, four courses? Most people are taking three courses plus journal club. So it's four courses, but one of them is just a two-hour course. Um, some people go above that level. Some people will just be taking two courses in journal club, and then they'll do research hours if they've got a research project they're looking at. And the benchmarks in the program are uh, every year, every student gets a, a, um, the, submits to us a progress review. How did it go this year? What courses have you taken? What projects have you worked on? Sort of a few pages a summary of where you're at. And then the faculty review all students together, and every student receives a letter with the faculty's assessment of your status in the program, how you're doing, what you need to work on, what's going well. Um, so that's kind of our way of staying very much in touch with students as they progress through the program. Um, advising is very uh, hands-on here. You don't, I, I think it's safe for me to say, 
students here don't have a hard time going looking for their advisor. Um, everyone's assigned an advisor. Mina? Oh, there's a, a question online. Um, are there any of the courses entirely online? There are none of our core courses that are entirely online. Um, some students, uh, students who want to take a quantitative research course, a lot of them like to take um, Ed 503, and there is a version of Ed 503 that's entirely online that's offered. But for the most part, they're, they're in-person courses. So a lot of them have online components to them, but for the most part, they're face-to-face. -face. Um, so, so there's the annual progress review. Um, and then the big benchmarks in the program are, are were you about to add something or? Uh, no. No, okay. <laughs> what is, uh, there's a progress portfolio. Our goal is for students to be doing this uh, anytime they fit after they finish coursework, which is halfway through year two. So hope, uh, ex excuse me, halfway through year three. So uh, at about two and a half years, most students are done with coursework. Hopefully by the end of year three, they're defending their progress portfolio, although that doesn't always happen. And that is the comprehensive exam uh, for, for this program. So uh, the progress portfolio, you assemble artifacts from each of your core courses and, and, and research experiences, write an essay detailing your learning, and then that gets reviewed by a committee of three learning sciences faculty. Once you're past the progress portfolio, you're ready to start working on your dissertation proposal. The dissertation proposal you do uh, in active uh, collaboration with your advisor. So first, to second year in the program, you might be shopping around for advisors, deciding whether you're going to go with your initial advisor or ask someone else to be your advisor. By the time you get to the dissertation proposal, you know who your advisor is and you have also selected your dissertation committee. And that's a committee of five, at least three of whom need to be core LS faculty. Um, one of the other things that happens uh, in it, when you enter the program is that you find disciplinary advising as well. So whatever your disciplinary area is, you'll find a faculty member who is a mentor for you in that department or that area as well. Usually those are at UIC, but we have had people at other universities serve as disciplinary advisors. Um, so the thing that enters you into candidacy is the dissertation proposal defense. Um, and then you write your dissertation and then you're done. Mm -hmm. Questions on any of that? That's the PhD thing in a nutshell. You made it sound easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that as a complete lie. It is not easy. Um, it is fun. Anybody else want to add anything, students it or faculty? Fun. It is fun. <laughs> it's, it, it is fun. I'm not going to say that 24-7, 365, it's fun all the time, but the overall experience is very fun. Every, every one of these individuals developed their own idea and explored it in depth. Yeah. I don't think there's more fun to be had in an intellectual study. Just so. <laughs> anybody else want to chime in? Outside of the chemistry department. <laughs> Um, Minja, would you introduce yourself? You came in after you had done it. Hi, I am Min Jung Ryu. I'm a new faculty member in LSRI, and I'm um, in chemistry as well. So, um, yeah. And could you just say two words about your what you study? Uh, so my work is on um, the STEM education broadly for um, English learners, immigrant youth, and um, refugee, former refugee youth. Yeah. Thanks. And do you mind introducing yourself as well? I'm uh, Radhika Reddy. I'm Assistant Director of Application Development at ACCC, so I'm oh. with the UIC family. Um, I applied for the Computer Science uh, PhD, but after speaking with Professor Moore, Moore yes, one of he, our faculty. Right, he uh, recommended Learning Sciences um, after kind of understanding what my vision is and whatnot, so um, that's why I'm here. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people come here from other departments where they want to study learning and they are not finding the kind of conversation that they need about the study of learning. And so this is a place to have one foot in that department and one foot over here, too. Um, yeah, I mean, um, no. There's a question online about funding and what it covers. Mm -hmm. So uh, our policy is that we only admit people to the program that we know we can fund. Uh, for five years. So we offer that funding. As long as students are in good standing, once they've been admitted, there's funding for them for over five years. And that covers, the tuition is covered, as well as a stipend, the exact amount of the stipend. I don't know. 29 have, something. 29 something over the course of the year. year. Um, students, uh, doc students have the option very often, it's not guaranteed, but very often they have the option of working in the summer on the research projects that they're working on as well. Um, and um, and then it 
covers uh, the benefits as well. I think hopefully that answers that question. Other questions? So here's a list of uh, graduates from our program. I don't know if we're updated. I think we are. Dane is up there, yeah. So um, th these are, um, w we started a little over a decade ago, and Stephanie and Mike, both advisees of Don's, were our first two graduates, 2011 and 2012, both in chemistry. But um, as you look through here, you can see there are people whose disciplinary specializations are chemistry, mathematics, math ed, computer science, biology, um, but then you also have things like Jessica, whose specialization is data visualization, Jose Melendez, whose specialization is urban planning, uh, Emma Hospelhorn, whose specialization was um, musical cognition. Um, so a very wide range of different disciplinary specializations, and among the students who are here now, uh, that has continued to grow with many other disciplinary specializations. Some people come in knowing exactly what their specialization is and what kind of work they want to do, but a lot of people figure that out once they're in the program as well. Um, and so some of the opportunities that you have as a doc student in learning sciences are um, being involved in research hands-on. I know this person. Hi, you want to introduce yourself? This is Susan Goldman. I'm here for the next session. <laughs> Susan is the co-director of the LSRI and Learning Sciences program. And I'm Allison, Kester Superfund, and faculty here in Learning Sciences. Um, so, working as a graduate research assistant is one of the kinds of professional development you get here. Um, some, but not all, students also work as a teaching assistant in a, in a partner department. Um, we encourage all students to look at fellowship opportunities and to apply for funding that would give you a little more independence in your research direction. Um, and we've had fairly good luck with students winning some of those fellowships. Um, we encourage students to apply to present at conferences as soon as they're ready to do so. We our students here founded the Learning Sciences Student Association, uh, uh, the Learning Sciences Student Conference, um, which has since then taken off and. and uh, happened each year at different universities. A lot of our students present at that conference as well. Um, students are considered colleagues and collaborate on uh, grant proposals, um, co-author papers. Uh, that's just sort of the way that things go around here.